Okay, this is part two of the Hope by American Stitchers. And so far in the first video, you should have the outside of your bag done, the exterior of your bag. So this is the back of the bag. You have your two zip pockets here. And then the front of the bag, you've got your slip pocket here. And you have on the bottom, your purse feet done. Okay, so that's where we left off in our last video. So now we're gonna stick that aside and we're gonna go ahead and start our lining. So the first thing we wanna do is to take our zipper facing. And we're gonna put some double-sided tape on it because we're gonna go ahead and stick it to our um, lining. So I usually just use my quarter inch double-sided tape. Put a couple of lines of it down the centers. Now I'm gonna put a little piece here on the ends as well. I'm gonna move you down because I can see we're not quite in the camera here. Right. Oops, sorry, you're bouncing. Okay. So, that little piece. So we have double-sided tape along our the back end of our facing back side of our facing and we're going to hold on a second I got double sided tape stuck to me <laughs> okay so on one of these lining pieces you should have marked your you'll see that in blue where your pocket goes and on the lining piece itself if you remember there's a little, little cut out for that you just want to mark it on one of your lining pieces because there's just one zipper pocket. So I'm just going to peel this off and I'm going to stick it on. I hope that y'all have worked on the outside of your bag, the exterior, and that it is going well. If you have any questions, Feel free to send me an email, chris at simplyclassic.net. You can also ask the question on YouTube because other people will probably benefit from it as well. And then I am quite sure that um, Gail from American Stitchers could help as well. I'm sure she'd be willing to do that. So I'm just going to line up this box that I drew and I'm going to line it up with my box that I cut out here. Just like that. And now I'm going to stitch around the outside of this facing. And I'm going to, I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch my thread color for that. I've been switching my thread color as I go around, um, you know, as I use the different color vinyls. And again, you do not have to do that. Contrast stitching is absolutely gorgeous. Just need to make sure your stitches are absolutely perfect if you want to use contrast. Because obviously that is the one thing that you will see. And when I am um, making garments, um, a lot of times the higher end garments are you'll see like if you have a wide stripe, like say you have a pant and it's a wide stripe, as the stripes change colors, so do the thread colors. And that's when you know you're, you've got a real high end garment. So um, I guess I'm kind of using that same, I don't know if it's really same methodology, but it is in my head <laughs> um, for this bag. Just trying to switch it out to, to make it, um, to make it in my mind a little maybe higher end bag. Okay, so I'm going to switch to a top stitch length here, and I'm just going to stitch around.
Okay, so we have our zipper facing on here. And I, I love doing my zippers this way. Um, I use these facings all the time because you don't have to worry about sewing and then cutting to the box and flipping it and you know, like some zipper, interior zippers. And I think that this also adds a touch of class to the bag. So I'm just going to cut all the way down. And then when I get to this point here, I'm just gonna go behind the facing and cut as far as I can. Do the same thing in the other direction. I'm gonna flip it over. Make sure I don't cut my facing, go sideways here. And then just kind of fold this up and I'm just gonna cut this away. And don't worry about trying to cut it right on the line where you're putting your zipper. You really wanna cut it further away so that none of it's peeking through. And of course the waterproof canvas, is, if that's what you're using, is not going to fray. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so from the back, it's kind of ugly, but that's okay. From the front, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get our pocket prepared to sew it on. In the pattern, she actually has you put double-sided tape on your zipper and go ahead and install your zipper into the lining before you put your pocket on. I'm actually going to deviate from that a little bit. I probably should have waited to put my double-sided tape on the zipper, but I'm going to attach my zipper to the pocket first, and then I'm going to sew it in the bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wrong side of the zipper, and I'm going to, here's my zipper pocket piece. Take the wrong side of the zipper, attach it, or put it wrong side against the right side of the pocket. All right, let me say that again. The wrong side of the zipper against the right side of the pocket. I'm gonna clip that. I'm going to sew it, and then I'm gonna take, flip it around, take the other side, and do the same thing. Take the wrong side of the zipper, flip my zipper up, and attach the right side of the pocket to the wrong side of the zipper. I'm going to clip that. And sew it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this and then I'll show you how I actually install it in the lining. Okay, I now have this stitched on. And I'm gonna make sure that my zipper opens and closes going to the left. Or rather, closes going to the left. So the zipper pulls on the left hand side. I'm just gonna lay this flat and I'm just going to cut to separate these into two pocket pieces. Now I'm gonna go and I'm going to top stitch these little wings down because it just makes it easier when you stitch the bag or when you stitch this onto the lining if these are top stitched. So just flip this around. You can see I already did one here. I top stitched that one. I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch my second one and then we'll be ready to install the zipper. Now I'm not doing this on my walking foot machine. Um, I'm actually doing it on my um, domestic Janome. And the reason why is because this machine, this Conso walking foot machine is really for heavy duty fabrics. One layer of this 
um, waterproof canvas and a zipper is not, it, I mean, this machine can't handle it because it's too light. So a lot of times when I do linings, until I get into several thick layers, I'm going back and forth between the two machines. Um, it just, it, for me, it gives me a better end product. Okay, so I'm gonna go top stitch this and then I will be back and show you how we install this. And actually, I'll move the camera over there so that you can see maybe what I'm doing. Um, let me do that. Okay, so here we are at my domestic machine. Let me put my little arm here back on. It is a um, Janome Skyline S7. And what I'm gonna do is just take this pocket, I have you kind of over my shoulder here, so hopefully you can see, okay. I'm just gonna top stitch this little wing down. So I'm gonna do it from the wrong side. I'm just gonna make sure that's tucked under away from the zipper. So now we have this top stitched. I'll move you a little bit further away here. And we're gonna make sure that our zipper is on the left-hand side. I'm gonna peel off this tape. And then what we're gonna do is just center our pocket piece right on top. Okay, so once we have it in there, Good and straight. Now we're going to sew around the inner part of this facing. Make sure that the back of your pocket is open. Okay, make sure the back of your pocket's open when you sew this, and you're just gonna sew all the way around. I'm locking the back stitch. I'm gonna pull my threads through, and I'm going to tie them off in the back. Okay. From here, we're going to fold our pocket piece back and clip our pocket together. And then we're going to sew around our pocket to close it up. You want to sew from this side here. You're just going to fold your lining back as far as it'll go. And then you're going to stitch right here. Catch your zipper, back stitch on your zipper, come down. You're going to turn it, go around. You're going to turn it. And then you're going to come back up this side and you're going to come stitch as close as you can and close your zipper, catch your zipper here again, okay? Okay, 
So now what I'm gonna do is just trim around my zipper, cut these seam allowance, or zipper pocket, cut these seam allowances down. In the back. And then our zipper pocket is complete. Okay, so let's move on to the other side of the lining. Okay, so we're gonna work on our slip pocket now on the other side. So you're gonna take your slip pocket piece. It is a perfect square. You're gonna fold it in half, right sides together. And you're gonna sew up just the sides, this side and this side. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little trick. This is something I learned when I was making, um, and still do periodically, make tops and things like that. Instead of cutting these corners, you know, most times they're going to tell you to snip them and then poke them out. If you take and you fold right on the seam, stick your hand in here and just hold that down. Okay, I'm just holding that. See, there's the seam. Just folding it down. I'm just holding it down. And then just take and push that corner out. And then what I use is my little um, ball turner, which, of course, I don't have right here. Um, again, fold it. Hold it with your thumb and just push it out. And then just get your, um, don't put anything real sharp in there, just get your ballpoint turner. I'm gonna get that. I know my technical names aren't, but this is my little ballpoint turner. It's got a little ball on each side. That's why I call it that. But you're just gonna take this and you're gonna stick it in the corner, just to kind of pop that corner out the rest of the way. And if you do that, you will get perfect corners. And they're perfect every time. So what you're doing is you're just dealing, you're just telling the bulk to fold down instead of cutting it off. And um, the only time, like if I'm, if I was gonna be doing this out of cotton instead of waterproof canvas, and I was going to interface it with woven fuse, I would just keep the woven fuse out of the seam allowance so that when I turned it, I didn't have all that thickness because when you get it super thick, it is hard to do. But with this, it works perfect. So from here, I'm just gonna lay this flat and I'm going to stitch this top closed. Okay. Now you're gonna take your accent piece of vinyl that she has you cut in the pattern. And you're gonna put double-sided tape on each side on the long end. Sorry, my big head's in the way. Let me try this again. You know how to put double-sided tape on though. This is a hard angle for me to work at at this machine. Okay. You want to draw a line down the center.
And then what you're gonna do is take your pocket piece and you're just gonna line the top up on that line you just drew. Fold this double-sided, or fold this piece over. And then you're just gonna go ahead and top stitch that. And that's gonna give you a nice top accent piece. get you up higher. Maybe that'll help keep my head out of the way and you'll be able to see a little better. So I'm just going to line that up with that line there. I'm going to take this paper back off, fold it over, Okay, and then you're just going to top stitch and then we're just going to clip these extra little ends off. And now we're going to take our other lining piece and we're going to go ahead and center this pocket on it. Let's go ahead and get our centers here. Let me get my ruler. We're going to put it Okay, the placement for this is four inches from the bottom. So not, not this end here, not this bottom, but this bottom. Okay, the very bottom. So we're just gonna measure four inches up. We know where the center of our bag is. We're gonna put this in the center. Now, whenever I adhere, or whenever I put the, um, slip pockets like this that don't go all the way to the edges, I actually pin them on when I'm using a waterproof canvas. It doesn't make any holes, permanent holes or anything, and it keeps it nice and stiff and straight. So I just, Put a few pins. You don't mean, need many, just enough to hold it. And then you don't have to worry about double-sided tape or any of that. And sometimes when you're pinning it, the um, it shifts a little. And as I'm looking at this pocket, I decided I want this side up. So I'm going to turn that around and redo that. So I'm going to do four inches up. And it's about three inches from each side. All right, let me try that again. Okay. From here, you want to go ahead and mark whatever pockets you want. 
So, I always leave a pocket for a cell phone. I like to have a pen pocket as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide these in, this into three pockets, and this is what she suggests in the pattern too. So I'm gonna measure the entire pocket, it's 11 inches. Um, my, my final width, measure yours, because depending on how much of a seam allowance you took, it might be a little bit different. So I'm gonna do one at five. I'm gonna do one at five. another one at five and then one a one one inch in the middle. So I've got a five inch, a one inch and a five inch. Okay, and then mark the same thing at the top, and then I'm going to draw the lines, and then when I sew this on, I'm going to go ahead and make those, um, sew down, you know, sew up and make those divisions. Five and six. This is a Frickson pen, but I'm going to use a, um, something a little lighter. Okay, so I'm going to change my thread color. I'm going to stitch down, over, up, do one stitch, come back down, over, up, do one stitch over, down, over, and then back up. Okay, so here's the finished slip pocket. And one of the things I always do in my bags is to put rivets on my interior slip pockets, wherever the corners are. Um, I just feel like if you're putting your cell phone in and out of here or a pen or something, that's just a lot of stress on these corners. So I always put little rivets there and I think it adds a touch of class to the bag and sophistication. Um, just makes it a little higher end and it looks, I think it looks pretty. So anyway, um, okay, so from here, the next step is gonna be to prepare our center slip or zipper pocket. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. Okay, it's time to do our interior slip pocket. So divider slip pocket. So we're gonna take our long zipper, number three zipper, and you can either put double-sided tape on here or you can just use clips. I'm just gonna use clips. And you're going to put it right side down on one of the pieces. Now, this zipper is a little bit longer than what you need, so I'm just gonna pull my zipper end all the way uh, to the end so that it doesn't get caught up in here. I'm just going to eyeball it, center it, and put some clips on it. Now from here you can either baste this on or go ahead and put the lining on as well. I'm just going to go ahead and put my lining on, right sides together. Put that as well. Now we're going to be sewing this at a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're going to flip it and we're going to top stitch at an eighth seam allowance. And then we're going to sew the other side on and do exactly the same thing. done top stitched and in the middle of that my bobbin ran out and all kinds of fun stuff so um, I'll show you how I did it on this other side so again we're going to put right sides together 
And we're gonna put wrong sides together. I'm gonna to put the zipper in the middle. And again, you can use double-sided tape here if you want, um, or you can just use clips. And all I'm doing is making sure that the sides of the pockets are matching up as I clip this. Because if the sides of the pockets match up, then when you turn this and baste it all together, it should all match up really good. You don't feel comfortable doing it all in one step, no problem. Either baste your zipper down first, or you can use double-sided tape or glue or whatever you like to use, whatever your method is. Okay, and I'm gonna sew this at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you're done with that, all you're going to do is put your lining sides together. Cut my thread here. You're gonna put your lining sides together. You're going to clip your sides. And now we're just going to base down these sides to hold everything together. And there we have our divider interior slip pocket. We're gonna close the bottom in just a minute. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, before we move on, I am gonna go ahead and base the bottom of this zipper pocket closed. Okay. Okay, the next step is you're going to take your lining panel with your zipper pocket. You're going to make sure your pull is on the left hand side, which it should be if you put it in right. And you're going to measure up a half inch from this side here, a half inch up on both sides. All right, I'm going to move you away so you can see the whole panel. Half inch and a half inch. I'm just going to draw a line across. We're going to take our zipper pocket. Go ahead and clip your ends off here if you've got extra zipper. Okay. 
So now what you're gonna do is make sure your zipper, your pull is on the left, the same as the zipper here. Now, if for some reason you put this zipper in backwards, or I wouldn't say backwards, I would just say with a pull on the other side. When you go to set this in, flip it around. You want them both to close the same way, whichever way that is. You're gonna line up the, you have a little cutout here at the bottom. You're gonna line up, line up the top of this cutout right here to the half inch line you just drew. Okay, so you can see that line in blue, I think. And you're just gonna line up the top of this on that line. We're gonna clip that in place. And you will see that the pocket does not go all the way up to the top, and that's okay. You see your pocket is short here and it is short uh, almost two inches so we're going to base that on and we do that first And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And you see here, it's short. Like if I lay this flat, it doesn't reach. You want to go ahead and pull it so it does reach. And line up this edge here with that line again. I'm going to clip this. I'm gonna to measure to make sure it's about the same distance from the top, which is right at two inches, so that's correct. And now I'm gonna base this side on. So from here, this is what you have. You can see that the zipper pocket on the lining, well maybe you can see, there you go, your zipper pocket on your lining is a little bit higher than your uh, divider zipper pocket. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, we are back over here at my industrial machine because now we're sewing side seams that have four, five, six layers of waterproof canvas and my industri or my um, Janome was struggling a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over back to this machine. Now I always put a key fob in my purses. So I went ahead and did that and just basted that in over here on the side. And now what we're gonna do is take our lining piece with our slip pocket and go ahead and put the rest of our lining that we just did on top of this. We're going to line up our side seams and we're going to clip them. Up to our dot. Our dot is going to be our starting point when we sew. Now, when you sew this, you're gonna to have to move your, your bottom piece that you stitched on. You're gonna to have to just kind of slide that out of the way. And we are going to stitch this with, I believe, a half inch seam allowance. Let me go check that. Yes, a half inch seam allowance. So you're gonna start at your dot, 
that you made when you marked your pattern originally. You're going to sew a half inch seam allowance from there all the way down to the bottom and just make sure you move your bottom out of the way when you get down to the bottom. Okay, we're going to line up the other side and do the same thing. And you are going to have to pull it to get it to match up. Okay, so now what you're going to do is take your bottoms, match up the center, clip that, and you're going to sew across that half inch seam allowance. From here, we're going to go ahead and box our corners and sew a half inch seam allowance to box the corners. So you're just going to take these corners. Oh, look at that. I caught my side seam and my bottom seam here. Let me fix that. Now this is a little stiff because you have that divider pocket in there. Let's see if the side lines up here. Looks like that side's off a little. Let's see what I can do to make it right here. Okay, the side lines up pretty good. Now I am going to put one, one seam in one direction and the other seam in the other direction as I get to this middle part here because it is quite bulky. I need to get some more clips. So I'm going to kind of take and, and swish this down some, and I'm going to sew this at a half inch seam allowance. trim this down. It's amazing. Um, she really put a lot of thought in this pattern because on the center divider pocket where you have those little half inch cutouts, that was to help reduce bulk right here and it makes a huge difference. So she is, the detail in the patterns is amazing. Okay, so this side I'm finding is not matching up exactly perfect. I've got some extra length in my bottom lining piece. So I'm just going to cut that off because it's the interior. 
lining, you know, it's not, it's going to be okay. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, because once it's all sewn, you won't, you won't be able to see it. So see how I have some extra there? It'll be okay. No one will know. But I do want to trim it a little more. I can see how it's, it's just a little too much. See how that's off there? I'm just going to trim that. So if this happens to you, don't take the whole thing apart. Just improvise. And you'll be okay. There, much better. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew this. Two lines of stitching and a half inch seam allowance and then um, I'm just going to trim it like I did the other side. Key fob. I've got my center divider pocket. I have my slip pocket over here. It's a nice big pocket there. Okay, so now we're going to move on to putting the entire bag together. Woohoo! tape along the top edge of the bag and the lining. You also want to put it along the top, or excuse me, you want to put it just below the fold line on your concealed pocket. So it's above the fold two line, but below the fold line. You're gonna remove the tape on the, on the, or remove the backing of the tape on this concealed pocket, and you're gonna fold this down. So you're taking the very top and you're folding it to the fold two line, and the tape is catching it. I've got my foam in there just a little bit. Okay. Then you're going to do the same thing, or before you do that on your top, you want to clip your sides to the fold line, not the fold to line, the fold line. So it's going to be the very first line that you made on your bag. So let's take a look at it. Here you are. You've got the fold line. And then down here, you have your full two line. Don't clip all the way down there. Just clip to this first line. We're gonna remove the tape on both the top or the exterior and the lining. I'm gonna cut off my little triangles here. And we're going to stick it down. Now, you're only folding it one time. You're not folding it twice. So, what I mean by that is you're going to remove your tape. And I found that my tape went on a little easier if I cut smaller sections of it instead of trying to put one long piece all the way around because it is a curved top. Um, 
So I'm going to take, and I'm just gonna fold this down one time to my fold two line. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm going to remove the backing from the tape on this side, do the same thing, and I'm gonna remove the backing on the tape on the lining, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, I've got all my sides taped down. Because this is a curved edge, I did have a few places where there were little tucks which is normal. So what I did was I would just clip where those tucks are and just fold one end over the other so that it all lays nice and flat. Okay, so that's what you're seeing. There were little clips. And then of course, from the right side, of course, once you get your zipper in and all, it'll all, it'll all be fine and lay flat. Okay, and I did the same thing on the right side. So you're gonna take your number five zipper, long number five zipper, you're gonna go ahead and put your zipper pull on, and then you're going to measure a half inch from the end. And this is, my zipper open and closes at this end. This is where it starts. So I went ahead and measured a half inch. And then you're just gonna pull this apart. You're gonna pinch right there at that half inch mark. And you're just going to I usually just put a pin in there to hold it. Do the same thing. You're just going to you're just going to pinch right on your line and then fold it up like that. Fold it up. Okay, so the zipper tape is basically folding on itself. And then I make sure my ends are even here. And then I'm just gonna do a little basting stitch on each side to hold that in place. Okay, we are getting close. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the front of the bag. The front of the bag is with the pocket the slip pocket and on the left hand side we're going to mark a half inch from the V we just make a little half inch mark with um, some kind of erasable pen and I do have an air erase pen that I'm going to use on that so I'm going to mark a half inch And do the same thing on this side, a half inch. Okay, so I'm just measuring from that V. I'm putting a little mark right there. Then, on the right-hand side of your bag, you're gonna do the same thing, but you're gonna measure in three quarters of an inch. So squeeze that together, measure in three quarters of an inch. 
and make a mark. Now you're going to take your tape, your zipper tape, and start from the right side of the bag and put the edge of the zipper tape that you basted down along the half inch mark. And before we do this, we're going to go ahead and put some double sided tape on the inside of this bag about a quarter of an inch down. So let's do that first. Okay, so now let's peel the tape off this right side and we're going to put our zipper in there. Now make sure that your zipper pull is closing over here to the left hand side. I'm just going to pull this off. We're going to mark this up on our half inch line. And you want about an eighth of an inch of the zipper tape to be showing. Now, when you get to your three quarter inch mark over here, you want to bring the zipper tape up. You're not gonna stitch it all the way to the end. You're gonna stop at the three quarter inch mark. Okay? Now, without twisting the zipper, you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So now we're going to go ahead and take our lining. Let's set this aside for just a minute. And we're going to put tape along the outs. It's the outside, but it's the inside of the lining, all about a quarter of an inch all the way. Make sure all that's on there real good. Okay, so now we're gonna take our bag clips off of the concealed pocket tape here. And you want all the zippers to open in the same direction. So typically your zipper pocket is going to go in the back of the bag. So this zipper pocket's closing this way, my interior zipper divider pocket's closing this way, and 
the main bag is going to close in that direction. So that's how I want to put this lining in. So now we're going to peel the tape off of our lining. Make sure it's in there real good. And we're going to get all of our edges together. Now, she goes over a little trick in the pattern about how to keep your lining and your face at the same distance as far as showing how much zipper tape. What she says to do is to take a pin and you want to stick the pin right along. You're not going through the fabric. You're going just through the zipper tape. So now you know you need to put the lining piece below that pin, right below that pin. And that's how you're going to line that up. And you're going to know they're exactly, make sure your pins are straight and that's how you know you're gonna be exactly lined up, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my tape from my lining. I'm going to put a bunch of pins in the zipper tape all the way around, and then I'm gonna butt my lining right up to these pins so that everything's good and straight, and then we'll come back. my lining in and I just wanted to show you how I'm using these pins again. You can see you have a back view and a front view here. You can see that what I've done is just put the pin through the zipper tape at the top of where my face fabric is. I'm lining up the back side of it right against that pin. And by doing that now I know my lining and my face are at the same point on the zipper all the way around okay so from here I'm going to go ahead and clip this because even though I have double-sided tape on it it is um, there are a few places where it's not sticking a hundred percent so as I clip, I can go ahead and take my pins out. Okay, this is my plan. I'm going to top stitch on this lighter color first on both sides, leave my threads long, and then I'm gonna end up hiding my tails. Then I'm going to switch out my top thread to the darker color, leave the lighter thread in the bobbin, and I'm going to top stitch around the sides. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna leave my threads long and cut them. So I'm going to switch to a top stitch length. I'm going to fold this side in. And out of the way. Okay. And then I'm going to under here I'm going to clip here let me get the clip out of the way
All right, here we go. Okay, I have um, finished sewing the zipper on and of course top stitching and I've knotted all my threads and I'm just going to show you how I hide my threads, my very last one here. So I, you know, bring everything to this either inside or outside and tie the knot and then I just thread, make sure I leave long threads, I thread a needle and then I just actually go into either a hole that has already been made by the machine, or in this case, I'm actually gonna go in the seam right here, and I'm actually gonna just push this through to the other side. Now, I always keep my pliers handy because when you have a lot of thicknesses, it's hard. And you notice I have a really long needle here. So what I'm doing is pushing through, and it's actually, here, let me unzip this so you can see it. It's coming out the lining here, okay? So I'm just gonna pull it down Pull the threads all the way through to the back. And then just cut them off there. Okay? And then they're they're hidden. You don't have any top stitch or anything on the top there. Alright, so what we have left is a zipper tail um, and our handles and then we are totally done this bag so what I'm going to do is just kind of clip the handles on so you can see them and then I will show you the finished product okay here it is completed now I still have to um, connect my handles I'm going to use rivets for that um, but you've got the concealed pocket of course in the back everything is just wonderful it is so pretty now if you have a crossbody strap of course the connectors are going to go on the side and you'll do that crossbody strap as well but otherwise i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i hope you learned something i hope it helps you i hope that you try the bag it is um takes a little bit of patience the pattern is absolutely fabulous um, just make sure you mark everywhere you need to mark and just be careful cutting it out. Go slow sewing it. And I think y'all are going to be very happy with the bag. So if you like it, like the, the video, if you learned something, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And until next time, happy sewing.